In today's video, we are going to take a flight on British Airways 48, which is from Seattle to London. And it's very special because we're on a Boeing 787-10, and I picked seat 10A. Now this aircraft is very new. In fact, British Airway has only received five of their 12, and I believe more are coming. There's probably more by the time you watch this video. And the way they've got it configured is about 50% of the space in the fuselage is configured for first and business class. So, and 50% for premium and economy, although the first and business class takes about 35% of the total passengers. So most are actually in the second half of the plane. And with this new Dreamliner, it's 25% more fuel efficient, it's quieter, it's just a better made plane, and they did a great job with it. Uh, a few minor things here and there that could be improved, but overall, I would say if you can get on board one of these for business class, it is much, much better than their past business class. And if you've been on it, you'll know what I mean. Okay, what I wanted to do here was talk about the different features of this seat. First of all, the window is digitally controlled, so you have a little button and you can darken it or lighten it at your discretion. For the most part, the plane, I believe, can override your settings for takeoff and landing and sleeping. Now, of course, one of the main features you're paying for on business class is the seat actually becomes a bed. So it lies flat and you get some blankets and pillows and you go ahead and sleep for as long as you want. The third big feature is a display that's pretty large, definitely larger than your economy or probably premium economy and full of great entertainment, although I never watch much of it. The storage area was okay. I could always use a lot more, but ironically, the storage space in business class was more than in first class. So I thought that was a little unusual, but yeah, I could have used more. Now, I don't know if this thing was broken or poorly designed, but it looked like a touch screen when it came to life, but it didn't actually respond to the middle area at least. So that was a little bit odd. And I don't know, I guess I'd have to try it again to see what happens. And like I said, the seat turns into a bed, but to be ultra comfortable, you gotta have a pillow, a blanket, a pad, and they give you all of that, plus a pair of socks. So when you're ready to go to sleep, it should be no problem dozing off especially if you had a lot of the wine. All right, this seat is very sweet and really not that much below first class. A lot of room in there to move around and a lot of windows, you'll get one, two maybe. Plenty of overhead space that won't be used up by other people. And again, your legs are gonna fit just fine. Plenty of storage inside the cabinet, although it could be bigger, as always. I think it always could be a little bigger, but uh, it fits a few things earbuds, sunglasses, you name it. This little panel was a bit problematic. It didn't really seem to do anything. The right side did, but it seemed like uh, the left side, I don't know what it was supposed to be used for, but it didn't really make any sense and it wasn't responsive. See, it looks responsive there, like you could touch things, but they didn't actually control anything. So that was a little odd. A little bit of a cubbyhole area with USB charging, which was nice, your little headphone jack, proprietary of course, so you gotta bring an adapter if you wanna use your own headphones, and the controller for their entertainment system. Another USB, so actually inside there was pretty nice. Of course, you have to keep it open if you got your cords coming out of it. And they did a pretty good job of uh, controlling the lighting. It's a very nice setup, and I would say it's, you know, they did a good job with it. One window, I only got maybe one and a half, so. Nice little entertainment system. And there I am, having a good time. The window is controlled digitally, which works very well. There's a small little, uh, I guess it's a lever. Kind of hard to understand these things, but I guess light or dark. If you open up the little cubby area to the side, you'll get some headphones. They worked okay, not exactly top of the line. In fact, uh, yeah, I don't know if they did a great job noise canceling or the fit or anything. They didn't do anything terribly well, but they did work and you do get a pair given to you. Again, they have their own adapters, so if you want to bring your own headphones, you have to bring your own adapter for them and be wired. The display or control system, I would say it was really weird because it's not very responsive. The touch screen didn't work very well. I mean, it does work with a long delay and maybe pressing a couple times, but it's just slow and unresponsive, which is kind of odd because these things I think would be kind of new, 
Uh, with all the advances in cell phone technology, I would think it would lend itself to these things, but no, not very good. And uh, you can see the size of the screen compared to a water bottle, so it's a decent screen. So it's a pretty convenient setup in there, plenty of leg room, you won't have any problems stretching out, and I like the fact that they wish you a Merry Christmas on British Airways. Ah yes, the good old amenity kit. Every business class or first class seems to have one on these airlines, Alaska doesn't. And you get an eye mask, socks, a few different things like lip balm, moisturizer, and a little bit of a scent, a pen, a toothbrush, and toothpaste, earplugs, but no little case for it. First class has that. So overall, I'd say it's a decent setup. Uh, you get a few nice things, so it works. And there you go. Um, the pen I can't find. I don't know what I did with the pen. Ah, the complimentary champagne before takeoff. I really like this, and I did have a small glass myself. But of course, it's all about the wine, and they do a great job of having a really fun selection. I think they were tasty wines, and I wasn't disappointed. Of course, I can't drink very much, so I only got to try one or two with the reds and the port. Maybe that is a lot. I don't know. And they, of course, have a good selection of spirits, a few things to choose from, so you won't be disappointed. Not that many beers, but I don't know how many people drink beers on these types of flights. I got my wine, and I was perfectly happy with it. Next was to choose something for dinner. Um, they had uh, several good samples. Uh, shrimp is what I picked, and then the uh, seared beef filet, so I thought I'd try those two things out. You get real silverware in, in business class, so that's convenient, and it works well for cutting things or using a fork and knife. I just like having real silverware. Again, the first selection was shrimp, and looks like they had some mango there. It was okay, not bad. Everyone seems to go with mango a lot. I guess it's an easy food for planes. There you go, shrimp, a roll, a little stale. The rolls are never very good. And a little bit of a rice dish, which tasted fine, um, some butter, it helps with the roll, I guess. It tries to save the roll, but it is kind of a bit stale. They're never that fresh. And as for the main course, we got some asparagus, that beef I mentioned, and an onion. The onion, actually, I think was one of the best parts about it. The asparagus was good, too. Eh, the beef, I don't know, could have been better. But airplane food isn't always the greatest, even in business class. I think the saving grace of this was probably this dessert. It was just really tasty, a bit of a candy leaf there. Um, I would say this was an excellent choice. Yeah, if you get a chance, definitely look into this dessert. The main thing with these types of flights or business class tickets is the fact that you can create a bed out of your seat. So they give you fresh linen. You know it's fresh because they got a little bit of a sealed label around it. But it's plenty thick. It works. The planes aren't that usually that freezing to begin with, but I found this was an adequate bedding arrangement for me. And you've got that little pad that goes under yourself, whatever, I guess it's, I guess, I don't know, it's equivalent to maybe a sheet, but it helps prevent uh, your head from contacting the seat directly, which is nice. And here I go, I'm going to use the controls and turn my seat into a bed, and this is what it's all about. And again, there's plenty of room on this. And there I am, I'm settled in, well, that's my seat, and I'll be in it in a moment after I was done taking the picture, and I will go to sleep for the next, I don't know, four to six hours, I think. Several hours passed, and the next thing I knew, we were getting ready for landing, so you have to put your seat up. I looked out the window, and I've seen something I've never seen before, white England, or white patches on the ground instead of green or yellow, that was just odd. All of it was just so weird to see England under snow. It had snowed a few days before. It was melting away, but there was still a bit of it left. But it was just a crazy sight. So I would say, uh, yeah, it was very memorable having uh, to, gone to London in the uh, winter time, the deep winter. It was like mid-December, so that was a unique experience. Another interesting thing was we couldn't park directly at the terminal, so they drove up one of those ramps, like in the old days, all this was covered, and then you go down the ramp and you get on buses, and the buses take you to the terminal, so a little old school, I guess, but kind of fun, and because we were in business class, we didn't have to wait very long to get to the bus and then over to the terminal, so it worked out all right. 
So, what would you expect to pay for all this? Well, this was one trip where I actually didn't use miles, and probably the first time that I did business class without miles, so it was a little bit pricey. I got this ticket again on, well, October 11, 2022, and I bought a premium economy seat, um, which I had then upgraded a bit because I, I chose my seat, which was a two seat configuration, so that way I wouldn't be in the middle, um, and it actually worked out okay. About a week later, I noticed when I logged into British Airways that they would let me upgrade to business class for $659. Um, well, now the total became $2,053. So that is more than I've ever spent for a ticket directly with cash before, in at least one way. Um, so it was a bit pricey. I guess the main advantage of doing something like that is that I was able to get miles to the flight and get elite qualifying miles to the flight, which helps for future upgrades. So I think I got 18,000 regular miles and probably 7,000 of those miles were EQM. So that was, I guess, the one upside. But again, $2,000 for a flight one way, eight hours. I don't know if I would do that again. I think using the miles is probably the best thing. And again, I would have been fine on premium economy had they not sent me that offer. I already thought I was spending too much on premium economy anyway, but you know, $659 more to be business class. Well, I, I had to do it. All right, well, that's it for this time. Um, who knows when my next flight will be? Actually, I do in about eight weeks. So looking forward to it.